Mario Party 10 was recently announced to be released on March 20th, and I am so hyped for that game. So, I decided to count down my favorite minigames from the other games I've played. Then, once I'm finished with that, I'll do one for Mario Party 10. I so hope it won't be as big of a disappointment as Island Tour. I will, unfortunately, not be doing Mario Party 1, 2, or 3, because I have not played those games at all. For this video, I present to you Top 10 Mario Party 5 minigames. Mario Party 5 has always been my very favorite Mario Party, and the minigames are no exception. Mario Party 5 has 13 more minigames than 4, partially due to the introduction to dual minigames, minigames where only two people play against each other. I don't think there are really any minigames I truly don't like compared to Mario Party 4. I'm looking at you, right or left. It was quite difficult to decide where to put these minigames, and even I was surprised with some of the results. But first, the rules. Frightmare and the three bonus minigames are excluded. Otherwise, all the other minigames count, and these are my favorites. Mazes are meant to have one entrance and exit, and a winding path in between. So when your path keeps switching every three seconds, it can get quite infuriating. And painful. Stop! Mazed and Confused is the world's weirdest maze because the path keeps changing and the walls are made of electricity, meaning if you run into a wall, you're stunned for a few moments. All four players start in different corners and try to make their way to the center. There are a couple of strategies to winning this game. You could just take any path that leads closer to the center and wait for the path to change if you hit a dead end, or you could just pick a straight line and wait for the parts to open up. This method is not recommended. The fun in this game is that the experience is never the same. You are always having to look out for a new path to get to the center and being careful not to run into the wall when the maze changes. It's also pretty funny when you cut off one of your friends right at the end. Sorry, Selena. Open! Let's see here, got my picnic basket, my food, my frisbee, yep, I think I'm all squared away. Oh dear. Star! In the minigame Squared Away, a single player in a speedy little block races around an arena where the other three players try to squash that person in a giant but very, very slow blocks. Cooperation and communication is key for the trio players if you hope to trap the single player and squash him. For the single player, your best bet for winning is not backing yourself into a corner. If you can, always try to stay in the center so that you have an escape route. For the trio players, your best bet is to get the single player into a corner. Contradicting suggestions, I know, but that's the point. If you can get the single player into a corner, it shouldn't be too hard to squash him. This game is very frantic for the single player, always racing around, avoiding getting squashed, and a test of teamwork for the trio. It's equally enjoyable no matter which position I'm in, though I think I prefer to be the squasher. I'm evil. <laughs> if gladiator games were like this in ancient times, I think the attendance rate would have doubled. Gladiator's only tie to real gladiator games is its name. There is nothing similar. The single player goes atop a giant ball to roll around an arena trying to squash the other three players, the opposite of the last minigame. The surprise here is physics actually apply in this game. ALERT THE MEDIA! Momentum applies to the single player as you can't turn quickly. The trio can use this to their advantage. The disadvantage for the trio is the mole problem. If you run over one of the Monty Moles that will pop up from the ground, you will trip, leaving you open for a while. This game is one of my favorites for the same reasons as the last one. It's quite frantic. It's also spurred a debate about if circles have sides or not. So there's that. If you're a miner, the best way to still be a gambler is play Mario Party. And this minigame is probably the best example. Lucky Lineup is the quintessential gambling Mario Party minigame. Players are given a slot machine and a block to hit. Each time you hit the block, it stops one of the slots. Whoever gets the most points wins. 
It's really quite a simple minigame, and there's not much to say about it. I've always been a fan of luck-based games, though, and especially like slot machines. So this minigame is just a personal favorite of mine, because it's the type of game I like. Bound of Music, like a lot of dual minigames, takes place on a cloud high up in the sky. Before the minigame starts, you'll be able to see a shimmering outline of where the blocks are. Then it's a race to hit the most note blocks, and not to get a concussion. Brick blocks are mixed in too, but those aren't important. Jumping to collect the blocks is only part of the fun, though. Probably the best part about this minigame is after the collecting is done. During the minigame, you don't know how many note blocks you collected, unless you count. But more importantly, you don't know how much your opponent collected. So when the results come around, it's quite tense, and the minigame capitalizes on that. It reveals your blocks one at a time. It gets tenser and tenser for every block that rises up, until finally, the winner goes higher. The results part of the minigame is my favorite in the whole series, which is mainly why I like this minigame so much. It's just so tense! Mario parties are pretty violent for E-rated games. One subject it seems to deal with a lot is fire, specifically getting burned by it. If there was ever an advocate for raising Mario Party's rating, it's this minigame. Revolving Fire is a game where a single player tries to burn all three of the trio players. The single player takes control of three lava jets that he can move left or right. These can be effectively used to trick opponents by switching directions often. The single player can also perform a ground pound to send a wave of lava down the dome that the trio players stand on. The job of the trio players is to move around and jump to avoid getting burned. It's much easier to be the single player, but if you're good at the game, it's actually more fun to be part of the trio. Overall, it's a lot of fun to be both sides, as long as you're at least a little good at the game. When you wish upon a star, you might fall off and break an arm. When fish fly through the sky, you just might die. Why? Star! Fish Upon a Star is a fighting minigame. Four players attempt to be the last person standing on a floating star island in the sky. You can jump, punch, and kick players to get them off. While all this madness is going on, fish are flying through the sky at the island. If the fish makes contact, part of the island will break away and narrow the playing field. One of the funnest things to do with this minigame is to have four people just stand there and see who lasts the longest with the fish breaking the stage. The more I think about it, the more I realize I don't have a solid reason for why I like this minigame. I like games where the stage is slowly crumbling as you play, and I like fighting games too. The more evenly matched your opponents are, the more fun the game can be. Also, flying fish. The world is ending! If you've ever been caught in a mall mob, you know the feeling of being pushed back against your will. Now, pretend you're in Antarctica, and all the people are penguins. I thought this minigame was going to be my number one when I first thought of this series, but found out that it's only number three. It's still really fun. Players must weave between hordes of penguins on an iceberg and avoid falling off the ice. The longer you last, the harder it gets with more larger penguins. The fun in this game is how fast-paced it is. You have to be looking ahead to plan a route through penguins, or else you could be trapped in a pocket. I know my friends like this minigame a lot too, and it's a pretty popular choice for other people's number one. Though I think the next two are even better. A common enemy in the Mario series is the Bullet Bill, which launches from Bullet Bill cannons. But what you don't often get to do is launch the Bullet Bills yourself, and especially at other people. Which is a shame, because that's fun. In Bill Blasters, players are given three lives and a bullet bill cannon to launch bullet bills at other people. 
The more lives you have, the faster you spin, so starting off, it can be difficult to aim well. The last person standing wins. It seems like it would be easy to win, but keep in mind you've got three other people with the potential to hit you. All three of them could hit you right away, and you'd be out before you'd know it. I have no idea why I like this minigame so much, but it's always been one of my favorites, and my friends' favorites, too. It's just another frantic minigame that's always fun to play. But I can only think of one minigame that will beat it. Not only have I always been fascinated by luck, I also love keeping score. Not for myself, really, but for other people. The larger the point values, the better. And, as I mentioned before, I love slot machines. And frantic minigames. So it should come as no surprise that my favorite Mario Party 5 minigame is... Panic Pinball. What isn't to love about this game? It involves everything I love about minigames, especially luck. Teams start out with one pinball as they bounce around a pinball machine to collect points. Different point value buffers are located in the machine along with a big Bowser head with numbers for eyes in the top middle. Every time a ball hits this head, the numbers count down. Once the number reaches zero, the head will spurt many pinballs to the side that hit it last. This is what I love most about this minigame, as once this happens, it can get really chaotic. This can also often give the team that gets the balls an unfair advantage, but the other side can still get more too. Another thing is if you hit the block underneath the Goomba in the center, a slot machine starts up which can give you even more points. This game is a very, very simple game, but it's so much fun to play, especially with more and more pinballs. It's always been my number one Mario Party 5 minigame, and it's no different today. I'm Fanatic Mario Man, and thank you for watching this video. Mario Party 6 minigames on the way.